So I guess we're ready to start then, are we? <laughs> the clock says so, so yeah, welcome to the both about package server engineering. And let's start discussing. So uh, I hope you have browsed through the uh, proposal a little bit. Uh, but in a, in a nutshell, I, I prepared two slides <laughs> to basically show the process, how it would look like uh, I, I hope you can read that a bit. It was a five minute uh, dia. Uh, just a second. On top it says intent to salvage, on the right it says intent to package. Uh, yeah, that's a typo. That's the, the a, that's diagram a typo, is yeah. correct. The, the finger memory is was uh, <laughs> was taking control, I guess. <laughs> so, but we can fix that right away. <laughs> Modern tech. So, uh, yep. Um, the the idea behind this um, to yeah when when a package looks some uh, kind of unmaintained um, and fulfills uh, such criteria uh, some criteria like it needs some uh, some love there's um, unpackaged upstream versions uh, there's but there's no activity uh, on the um, uh, on the package, uh, then yeah, then it, it will be eligible. I think I wrote in the crit uh, criteria here. You keep ca uh, can keep the typos. Um, and if if the package is eligible for for salvaging, um, the proposed pro so process would be that one, that the one who is interested in taking over the the package uh, wants to file a. Uh, intent to package bug against the package with uh, Im uh, important priority, so it kind of sticks out. We talked about that, and we uh, explicitly did not choose to take a serious uh, or release critical one to avoid that that package is uh, falling out of testing because that's what may not may would make not so much sense. Um, when that is done, the uh, Recorder maintainer or team uh, or uploader uh, can react to that bug and say, "No, I do not want you to salvage the bug." Uh, this is that object first. Then the, the process immediately stops. If there's no reaction or if the maintainer says, "Oh, yeah, go, uh, go ahead, take it," um, yeah, in that case, if he says, "Go ahead and take it," it's easy because then, yeah, it's just a normal package takeover. Let's say it that way. Uh, if there's no reaction, um, uh, the the one who wants to take the package is uh, will prepare an NMU uh, with his fixes and also the change of them of the maintainership and upload it to delay 7 and this gives also some kind of reaction uh, additional reaction time to the current maintainer and if it goes through yeah yeah it's his package now or her package so that was in a nutshell for, and the timings here uh, is like this are like the, the criteria out of the uh, current proposal so um, one one as said before to that the package itself can be considered for, for salvaging itself, it needs lacking somehow. It needs some work to be done on, like bugs, uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, some um, upstream releases not packaged, uh, or s some, C let's say, severe uh, QA work on that one. Um, and of course, and additionally, needs to be only fixable by an upload. So that is a sourceful upload required to fix the issue. And uh, one of the criteria out of the table above needs to fulfill as well. And those criteria are focusing on, on the activity. So if there is no activity from that maintainer on that package visible for six months with the other criteria 
fulfilled, for example, or there are several NMUs in a row, which were, so basically an NMU maintained package. Um, and there would be another NMU coming up soon. And, uh, and, and also there, if there are NMUs, but no follow up from the maintainer on that one. And if we have a library transition or like, um, which is also kind of painful to have if you have some kind of non-active package but a big library transition. That could be also a good reason to consider that package eligible for salvaging. And uh, the other one is if we have more than one uh, unpackaged um, upstream version and it has been noticed already earlier. So for example, if there is version one Unpackage a uh, package version two unpackaged and someone filed a bug please package version two and then version three comes out and someone files again a bug please uh, package version three so that there's some strong interest in that uh, package getting updated and that is uh, and the version two is out, uh, out for more than one year so then it's also okay um, okay to to start salvaging on that one so that was kind of the process explained in a few words. The, the, the mail is, or the, the thread on devil is much more uh, verbose on that one. That one, that slide is compacted and might also miss some details on that one. Okay, so then let's switch back to Kobe and see if there are already some questions you might have at the moment, but please to make it easier for the ones on the stream and for me later revisiting this, uh, the video, please use the microphones. <laughs> I think that if you insist on saying six months or one year, you might miss all the heat of the moment. Uh, probably about after one month of waiting, the person who wanted it to get repackaged probably even lost interest. So you really got to strike when the iron's hot. Yeah. So I can maybe answer that. So I think you're mixing two different things. Um, one is the definition of how do we somehow decide when a package is unmaintained? And the other is once a package is unmaintained, how long does it take to adopt it or salvage it? And so the six months or a year is a, a, a conservative, I, I think, uh, a, way of defining when a package is unmaintained. So typically, uh, I mean, so one thing is we have to keep things in balance. Users sometimes have, say, optimistic expectations of how fast new upstream versions will appear in Debian. And if a package hasn't been updated after one month in Debian, to me that doesn't necessarily indicate lack of maintenance. I mean, Debian works on different timescales and, you know, roughly speaking, our criteria is stable releases. So uh, I think one month would be too short to, you know, a new version appears uh, of some package and I don't upload it in one month. I would find that a bit fast to consider the package unmaintained. So, on the other hand, if I haven't done anything for a year, then somebody can take it over in a month. So, hopefully that answers your question. Okay. Uh, question from IRC, then Stuart. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, forget it. Forget it. No, go ahead. From my no, uh, I mean, uh, please, can you switch back to the to the this this uh, screen? Yeah, uh, 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 there's uh, some wording to do, uh, I guess. I mean, I, I know this is just a, a, like, a, like a proposal, but say, uh, if you, uh, 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 there are many cases where you, you can have a one year period where two people request for one uh, a new upstream version, but the maintainer answers to the bug, saying, well, yes, this new upstream version is not ripe enough. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, things like that should be added to the, to the timelines. I, I think it's already covered okay. by, by the definition of maintainer activity mm -hmm. in here. So, in, in general, to be an inactive maintainer, you have to not respond to bugs. So, 
as it's written, you could respond to bugs saying, hi, thanks for your request. I'm super busy right now, but I'll get to this next month. And that yeah. would qualify as activity under these, as I say, conservative mm -hmm. guidelines. So, by the way, um, please also make notes in the copy because it's, it will be hard for us to make notes and talk at the same time. So please also uh, enter our remarks into, into the copy. But I only brought my cell phone, so I don't think I can use copy. You can also add your thoughts later if you want. <laughs> I just thought I'd speak up in support of the relatively long durations in the uh, sort of adoption time scale because I think we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that there's a big difference between uh, sort of a particular problem with a particular sense of urgency that might motivate a traditional NMU as being you know, the sort of obvious way to deal with somebody who's short-term unavailable, and the notion of salvaging a package implying that we've sort of reached a point where the maintainer's involvement with it is, is you know, unretrievable. It's also really interesting that I had a very different thought about this notion of if a month is too long and you've lost the heat of the moment or the passion or something, if somebody is going to take over a Debian package, I would hope that their enthusiasm is going to last for a really, really long time. And if a month isn't, is too long to, to sort of sustain enthusiasm, then, you know, years will be a problem. So I, I'm with you in the corner with us cranky old guys. Um, but I, I do think we have to think about new contributors to Debian in this context as well. So I don't want to stretch it out too much longer in the sense that I think a place where I see a need for such a policy is new contributors who want to help and who are blocked by maintainers sitting on packages. Chris? Hey, um, I really like to hear from people who have um, sal potentially salvaged packages in the past, like before this proposal, like what, if, what problems they've run into um, and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, Doko needs a mic, or to stand up, one or the other. There's an extra mic. So, um, well, I did something to a package which sounds like a salvaging, that was libcdio, um, a package which failed to build in one of the GCC transitions. And it was not fixable uh, without um, updating to a new upstream. Mm -hmm. No reaction from the maintainer, so what I basically did, preparing uh, an NMU, and for the second break, I decided, well, okay, uh, I just um, changed the owner to Debian QA, uh, because apparently the package was not maintained, and it was blocking a lot of stuff. Uh -huh. so, so, so can I ask if the new process would have helped you, in, in, in this proposed process? I assume it would. Uh, you wouldn't have had to set to, do you, would, did you would, want this package? It would legalize my actions. <laughs> Okay, but it, it, mm -hmm. we don't talk about Debian QA here, so, but you could change it to Doco as the maintainer. Right, but Wh usually I don't want to do that. <laughs> that was my <laughs> question, yes. So, one other thing. Uh, if, um, how do we, what, do, what are we doing with packages which aren't team maintained? Um, say the um, uploader is going away, or the package owner is going away, the uploader is either a team or the package maintainer is a team. There are teams which are working very well in Debian, like Perl and Java, but, um, well, the Python applications team, Python modules team is a very loosely coupled team and um, packages fail down the cracks. So who would be responsible for that? The uploader, the team, what would you do? Uh, Toby, did you follow the question precisely? I um, not 100% sure if I got it, but uh, you've thought about team in, um, empowerment, right? Uh, so one thing is um, we thought or talked about it that the team should be have also the same the uh, kind of same rights as the uh, as the maintainer or the other uploaders. So 
if a team, if it's team maintenance, should be also go to the team and the team is also okay to object on that one, to object the salvaging. But on the other side, that is a really good opportunity for the team to get a new member. So uh, they should, they really should then r not say object, they should say, hey, cool, do you want to, uh, to join the team? So Maybe. <laughs> I think that wasn't Doko's question. So let me try. I think your question was, this is okay, but it doesn't solve a different problem I see, which, is, which you see, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is that some packages are formally maintained by teams, but practically unmaintained. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, such a package actually would be eligible for salvaging, right? It, it would meet these criteria, but it would have to, uh, presumably someone would be discussing about moving it out of the team and into individual maintenance or joining the team and, and joining the package as an uploader. Either the, the latter doesn't need a new process. Right, the, the latter is something which is in general possible, right? All teams formally welcome new members. And so, so I'm not sure I, okay, I think I understood the question, but I'm not sure my answer is very satisfactory. Well, I think it, it solves, um, it addresses problems for teams which have a very tight coupling of the members or where the team feels upon responsible for, for every package. I see. But I think it, it doesn't work for, for um, teams where you just uh, upload uh, or you, you, you join to, to get upload rights. Right. Um, so I would say that there's nothing that says you can't salvage packages out of a team if the team isn't doing a good job maintaining them. I, there's mm -hmm. nothing... I yeah. think There's no special status for teams in that. Right. Sense. So I think my suggestion in this case would be that when this reaches the level of a sort of well-documented process or even an element of policy, that it just have some explicit wording in there saying, you know, what the alternatives are in the case where there's a, a team that's involved. Um, beyond that, though, I was going to comment that I also have been on both sides of the salvaging process. I have found packages that have gone essentially unmaintained and where I had some immediate need for, you know, a newer version or something like that. And you go and you try to poke the maintainer and if they're not responsive, you maybe do an NMU and if, you know, it looks like it's still unmaintained. Uh, I've even gone so far in the past, at least on one occasion I can recall, of just taking over maintainership of the package and assuming if the other person ever reappeared, we could have a gentlemanly conversation about what the right process would be. On the other side, though, I find a, a documented process like this potentially really helpful because there have been at least a half dozen times I can rem remember in my own history where somebody approached me as the maintainer of some package I wasn't putting much time into and said, hey, what about? And my response was, would you like to be the maintainer of the package? Because I'm clearly, you know, it's not something that's in the center of my universe anymore, and you sound like you care about it more than I do. And I've successfully handed over at least six packages that way that I can remember. So if this encouraged more people to think that it was okay to go poke even a well-known maintainer who wasn't doing the right thing for a package and, and take some action, that would be great. Uh, Sigo, then. Just, oh, so I was thinking that, as you know, world birth rates are dropping, so Debian will be affected too. So you have better start expecting less maintainers coming in than dropping off. Yeah, I think we won't solve that issue <laughs> if it is indeed an issue today. <laughs> Sorry, I think the mic's muted. Yeah. On my side, okay. If I understand well, your proposal is to add an ATS type of bugs to the BTS, right? But like, we already have the possibility to orphan a package and then adopt it. I don't see what, what this procedure with a new bug type is adding compared to the old process. Okay. Uh, if mm -hmm. the, like, we could decide that 
it'd be okay to offer packages quicker in the same amount of time, like mm -hmm. six, six months? So there's no process for me to orphan your packages, right? Correct. There's, there, so so the, the difference here is about who's filing bugs. Mm -hmm. If, if you're mm -hmm. an inactive maintainer, that if you're orphaning your packages, that's activity, right? That's contributing to Debian, and you're actually, that's a maintenance step for the package, right? Currently, I can ask the MIA team to do that for me, right? No, no. because... Uh, Toby can answer this yeah, yeah, better than I can. The MIA team can do orphaning. We have some scripts for that one, but that's not, not the normal way. Usually it's that the maintainer should do that themselves. We do that if the maintainer does, doesn't do it, if he does not react and it's a... But that's the but case we are trying to address within six months of no response, right? But it's actually all or nothing. Yeah. MIA is all or nothing. So uh, if I'm not maintaining what... Okay, let me be honest and say, there's at least one of my packages that should be salvaged. I'm not mm -hmm. proud of that, but let's be realistic. Uh, so what Toby can do, if, if I don't get around to doing something about that, which is part of the problem, right, me not doing something, then Toby can orphan all of my packages and declare me MIA. But that's a bit extreme because some of my packages mm -hmm. I just uploaded yesterday. Right, so I'm, I'm clearly not falling into the MIA yep. process, and the MIA mm -hmm. process won't get anywhere with me. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it would be actually that way if someone tells me, hey, David is no uh, it's, it's, it seems to be MIA because uh, package XYZ is not, uh, he has not seen an upload to, uh, since two years or something like that. I would check and would say, oh, he up just uploaded uh, the package yesterday, uh, some packages yesterday, and would respond, sorry, the he is clearly not MIA. I cannot help you. Okay, so then we have we have two cases here. One is where somebody's not responding, right? Six after six months, it's okay. We can take over the package. We could ask the MIA team to orphan it, or you could decide to orphan it yourself because you recognize it, and then mm -hmm. somebody could ask you to orphan orphan the package. Sure, but I won't answer because I'm doing a bad job of this package, right? I mean, if I would, if I would deal with those responses, then we don't... If I would answer your email, like a, like a nice person, about this package, then we wouldn't need this process. But then, then you're, you're, in fact, asking for a third party to offer the package for you, and you call that ITS. No, no, you file the ITS bug, because you want mm -hmm. to take over my package, which is... And then... If you don't want to, you reply to the ATS package and close the bug? Yes, but presume that is no more effort, or that's about the same effort as orphaning the package, right? So if I'm willing to put that much effort into the package, mm -hmm. then okay, I'm, I'm still, mm -hmm. I agree. Okay, look, there are many ways we can game the system in Debian, right? There's some fascinating Lintian bugs. Um, but, we can't build the system on the basis of developers are hostile to Debian, right? So this process actually assumes that I'm well-intentioned, I just have spaced out this one package, right? So I'm not going to, it assumes that I'm going to mostly be honest or no more deluded than we all are from time to time, right? And, and so when I see this bug, I'm gonna say, uff, yeah, that's true, I, I should have done something about that. And I'll either say, great, Zigo, take it, or I'll say, oh my god, I can't deal with this right now, and you'll, you'll fall through and, and take over the package. And Enrico, there's a standing mic too. Or we could pass, would people rather pass the mic around? That would be great. The cameraman would probably rather we use the standing mic. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, just wanted to say that for maintainers that are actually hostile to Debian, we have other kinds of processes. Right. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> More questions? <laughs> Enrico, <laughs> please come back. Um, we, we've been discussing this since Portland, more or less. 
which is uh, one, two, three, four, five years, something like that. And there's every time a pretty good consensus, uh, but um, it, it hasn't gone into like implementation yet. Right. I wonder, so I was wondering about this this morning. Is it because um, there's not many packages to be salvaged. Is it because there's not many people that are looking forward to maintaining more packages? Is it because of being afraid of some social reactions? Like there's a taboo in taking over packages that we haven't gotten over. Is there a list of salvageable packages that one can look and say, let's stir the waters and give it a try? Uh, I wonder if there's blockers that I'm not seeing so, to, to adoption of this. So, so let me refer back to a previous comment about BDALs, about when this hypothetically ends up in policy. This, I think, won't ever be in policy because policy is about the contents of packages. Uh, I mean, okay, that's a debate, but, but it feels like it, it's not a good fit for policy. That's a debate we could have separately. Uh, yeah, so, so, I, so that some people think that's an important distinction. Um, so I think it's a politically difficult thing because we have a good process for fine tuning the contents of packages, but we don't have well defined process, well, other than going to the TC for changing package maintainership. Um, so mm. uh, that's why I think it has been slow. And I think the proposal is to put it in DevRef. I, I, I'm interested what people think about that. Um, if that's, a, that's where the NMU guidelines are. And to me, this feels like something a bit related to the NMU guidelines. It's also. Maybe not a perfect solution, but it's better than the other ones that I can see. I know Sean will knack its inclusion in policy. Um, but that's actually working on that. Okay. Uh, I really don't think of those two as being hugely different, even though the scope and the bounding and sort of the degree to which we're expected to adhere to them is clearly different. But in my mind, they're both sort of, you know, how things get done in Debian documents. So apologies for generating the confusion. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for uh, creating that confusion because it gave me an opening to say the thing I wanted to say. So. Um, Enrico um, said about uh, the social impact of, of that. So from, from the MIA team experience, we have cases where people ping, uh, send us some ping and say, hey, look at package, at that package. I li would like to have it. Um, and the maintainer seems to be away. And well, uh, usually if there is not already a process ongoing, we have to tell them, okay, yeah, uh, there's a point. The data looks like the person is actually MIA, but come back in half a year because then we can give you the package. And this, is, uh, this has an, a huge social effect, I guess, because in half a year, he lost interest, probably, likely. Or, or maybe he thinks, yeah, OK, if Debian does not want me to help Debian. <laughs> Screw them. And uh, they, uh, yeah. N on the other side, um, I think we all saw that um, flame war about that uh, unfortunate hijack Okay, that was that check was not in order, but I think that is also. But if if you think further, this is why I think we need to have some some rules here, some something to rely on, something to back up some servicing to avoid that new contributors get yeah shout at because they wanted to help again and uh, did some work on a package and then got shouted at. That is really demotivating, and you're really likely to lose that contributor forever. So, uh, um, could you clarify what, 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 sorry, what you're referring to? I'm, I'm actually, I'm not familiar with it. Sorry. Say again. Can you clarify? Look, sorry. Um, can you clarify what specific incident you're referring to? Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Maybe I missed it. Oh, oh, the hijack. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
So um, going back to Enrico's question about how many salvageable packages there are, whether there is a need for this, it's kind of anecdotal, but I think people who hang out in the user support IRC channels, and it's probably the same on some of the mailing lists, it's a relative, it's a frequent enough occurrence that it's sort of, a, oh, one of these uh, is someone comes and their, their motivation is, I would like a newer version of this package, right? And you tell them, well, you can, you know, file a wish list bug, and they say, oh, well, you know, I did that, or whatever, you know, they're blocked. And in some fraction of those cases, the person says, okay, what would I have to do to update this package, right? How can I fix this problem? Those are the people we want, right? How can I fix this problem? So even if it's 10 people a year, that we could, you know, bring one step into Debian, I think that would be a huge win. Yeah. And those could get motivated to do more work in Debian as well. Right, maybe we can trick them into joining the MIA team. <laughs> <laughs> more questions? Next steps, I, I think we should, Everybody in the universe watching this stream across, you know, for thousands of years as it radio waves spread out, should send in their comments. Uh, so far the Devel thread seems to be a useful discussion, so that's a reasonable place to carry on discussing it. Or just add it to Gobby here. Uh, I would say we make another draft mm -hmm. and then we propose a patch to, to DevRef. DevRef yeah. I think DevRef would be the best thing. It, it would be the best thing to have it in DevRef. And yeah, I saw no one objecting to this, that. <laughs> this must happen before next DevCon. Yeah. Which means Toby has to do it. But, um. <laughs> so you're excluding from Microsoft are you uh, Yeah, I know Universal turns out to be kind of an overstatement. In this. A galactic operating system, I think, is a good start. Hi, can I expand my question earlier? So I previously asked who has salvaged packages before. I was wondering if anyone's had their packages salvaged beyond BDale and uh, how it felt, what they felt the process was, what they liked about that, what they didn't like about it, and things like that. Because I think getting, because this is obviously a new definition of how to salvage a package, but we've sort of been doing this sort of thing for a few years, just informally and in lots of different ways. So I feel like there's a lot of prior art lying around. Like, oh yeah, this guy took my package and it was, it was fine. And, or I remember this time someone took my package and it was suboptimal because of XYZ, and hey, why don't we try and address XYZ in advance? So. Do you really expect these people seeing here in this session? Well, there was one sitting here. <laughs> I'm not sure the package involved. Um, so I've become co-maintainer of packages that annoyed me a and, and then felt an irrational annoyance at the inactive maintainer, which I recognized as irrational and eventually got over. And then after seven or eight years, Drop the inactive maintainer from the from the field and said, "Hey, if you want to be put back in, answer this email." And uh, mm -hmm. no answer. So I think that yeah. maintainer's now MIA, and I mean it's not a very dramatic story, but that was my mm -hmm. experience. But you haven't had you haven't had any of your hello, you haven't had any of your packages. Uh, salvage, no, I've, I've ITA'd them and I've mm -hmm. given away packages or, or attempted to, and actually I have failed to give away packages um, because I wasn't willing or able to put in enough effort to do the transfer of maintainership. So I was like, great, take over the package, 
and the new contributor was like, "Gah, what is this Git thing? I, you know, help." And so that that failed. I failed. And would this process have helped? Would this potential a proposal help in that respect? Uh, no, <laughs> it would not have helped that specific situation. Can't help everything, but if you, you know, try and plug all the gaps as much as possible. Right? Yeah, that would be that would be sort of yeah making me a better helper of other people. I think that would be the the gap that would need to be filled there. Well, add that to policy. <laughs> yeah, by name. Bremner must be more helpful. <laughs> I can see Sean typing curiously. <laughs> will, you em will you ambition any, will this work for the ends too, like straight away, or any clarification will we need, or something like that? Well, I think we could give it a test run already, so to see how it works out, but at the moment I think uh, as it's not kind of formalized or established, can you there could be some backlash. Can you repeat the question? I didn't hear the question, sorry. I mean, this process like, looks fine if you have access to the archive, if you are DD. What will happen for people that doesn't have access to the archive? There is only okay. DMs or are need a sponsor. I, I, I mean, I, this person will fill the ITS bug and then it will have to find a sponsor. Right. I sure. think it should. I, but I think sponsors sounds, sounds, will. Sounds fine, yeah. but I mean, it, I think it should be clarified like so. People is not afraid of like sponsor that upload after. This this pro uh, this process should be not affected by any way how to upload things. So it should be a normal uploading process. Step plan, getting a sponsor and getting sponsored. I, I and and I think that proposal would also help on that one yeah, yeah. that you find sponsors willing to do the upload. Yeah. Because sometimes I they're quite a little bit of reluctant to do that. Yeah, case. I agree. I, but it's a lot harder to do an M N M U when you are DM than when you are DD. I mean, it's when you are DD, just sure. go and do it. So sure, I sure. think should be like there's, there's an extra step, but uh, yeah. it could be that you write in the title that you intend to salvage the package, for example, and that would help because, for example, out of my QA work in the MIA team, when I browse uh, mentors and have a few hours to kill to do sponsoring. I actually prefer those bugs who want to adopt packages. Yeah, I mean, so it's true that getting NMUs uploaded is hard for non-uploading, for non-uploading DDs, but uh, RC bugs are actually not bad, right? I think my, my subjective impression is that people can, by marking bugs as RC, and, <laughs> and they're really being RC, get NMUs uploaded reasonably easily or reasonably painlessly. And so I would second Toby's idea that marking things as ITS, I mean, it's a comf it will hopefully become a comfortable process. People will say, okay, yep, this is following something we have consensus on. It's not a crazy thing. I'm not going to have you know, a flame war about this mm -hmm. upload. And I think that will help, just to sort of repeat, I guess, what Toby said. Um, do you expect this process um, that people could do QA work just um, identifying packages that are that would be good for salvage, or not only if you really want to salvage the package yourself, you should? I, I think you shouldn't file an intent to salvage bug unless, but this could be an add-on proposal, mm -hmm. I guess, to, to mark packages as need salvaging or something. Um, yeah, I was just thinking of, for instance, the triaging bugs um, work that Solveig is doing and what some other people mm -hmm. are doing too, but uh, that helps, uh, yeah, triaging bugs to, to clean uh, uh, bugs from uh, packages, then it would be something that when, the peop when people are triaging bugs, they could recognize all these packages mm -hmm. poorly maintained, and maybe just to flag the, the maintainer that your package is, needs some love and 
if you don't yeah. care for it, then. Right. I, I, I like that idea because, yeah, often in bug smashing practice, you come across such packages which uh, you say, yeah, I do not have the time for that or the energy or it's not my, uh, it, I do not use that package too often, but still it could use, we, we have that newcomer tag. Maybe they can re uh, reuse that for that one to also to, to have some attraction for people who want to help. Maybe I like, I kind I like the idea, but I'd like to make it a second step because mm -hmm. I worry that the political challenge of getting Debian to do anything <laughs> is sufficiently yes, high I, I that, yeah. that, yeah. that I don't mm -hmm. want to block. But, sure. but let's reserve that idea for uh, for next year's uh, <laughs> Dev Conf because then the salvaging uh, process is hopefully active and <laughs> then we need new topics to cover. Right. Oh, yeah. But actually a good idea. I, like I mean, it. it could sort of distribute the work of the MIA team too. I mean, in the sense sure, yeah. that you notice that some all of somebody's packages are marked as needing salvaging. Yeah. You say, hmm, this is an indication that further... Yeah, may maybe we won't even to have our own tag for that. <laughs> Yeah. I, I really think that it might help also maintainers to like just being poked about their package that are not been well maintained and they might just come back to life. Because most of this criteria involves bugs already being filed on the package and the maintainer not responding to them. So maybe they'll respond to this ITS because they're motivated by some irrational ownership of the package and say, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose this package. I should finally step up. Maybe it will be a bit of a, a stick in that sense. Mm. I, I don't, so we'll have to see, I guess. Yeah. So we got one minute left. So sure. we give Enrico last mm -hmm. question. In any case, uh, DevConf is still a few more days, so we can also discuss here. Since you mentioned uh, Debian the Bell, uh, there was a thread I went to see. Uh, the Gregor Herman has a much more simplified proposal for the salvaging policy bit. Um, it's unfortunately not a one minute thing, but if we have consensus, I mean, I, I see no problem with that and, uh, oh, yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, it, it do, would we have a consensus also on something like that? that uh, the proposal came quite, uh, I saw it just uh, half an hour before the talk here, so I could not really digest it already. So, but I think that is also something we can can, uh, can discuss. Of course, this is will be more than one minute, so let's defer that to the mailing list or to, uh, to in-person discussions here. I, I, pre I would prefer to uh, have some written uh, communication to avoid that information is lost, but we can, of course, right. we can also have a talk. Or both, right? I yeah, mean, both. maybe it's useful to talk things over in person and then send yeah. a mail to the list to include yeah, that, everyone. That is quite productive and much of the, of the proposal has been done that way. Okay. Okay. Time to let the video team go. Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> and let's go forward with that.